ORF, 19th of September 2023, Interpreting China's 10 Dash Light to Understand Its Hegemony in the South China Sea. China debuted its 2023 standard map earlier this month, which features a 10 Dash Line, an upgraded version of the 9 Dash Line it previously used to claim territory in the South China Sea. SCS. China's neighbors were incensed by the action, perceiving it as an attempt to validate Beijing's sovereign claims to segments of their exclusive economic zones EEZ. The Nine Dash Line already covers over 90% of the SCS, however, the latest version adds a dash east of Taiwan, thereby increasing China's territorial claims. The SCS has always been a secondary theater of interest for India. It also objected to China's claims to Arunachal Pradesh and Aksaichin in its updated map and Tibet. With its attention mainly on the India-China border in Ladakh, where the Indian Army and the People's Liberation Army PLA, are locked in a protracted standoff, New Delhi has no territorial claims. But Indian analysts are wary of Beijing's expansionist policies in Maritime Asia. May China's bold actions in the South China Sea foreshadow a similar strategy in the Eastern Indian Ocean? Would the power asymmetry between China and India in Asia widen due to Beijing's military buildup in Southeast Asia? A hotspot for disputes arising from Chinese influence Examining the extent of Beijing's territorial claims in the area is vital to understanding the reasons behind China's SCS strategy. China's claims to sovereignty are broad and cover all of the South China Sea's islands, sea features, and marine area inside the Nine Dash Line. Most importantly, Beijing is prepared to use force to protect its purported right over the waters it claims. Over time, China has built and militarized artificial islands in the South China Sea. These days, it regularly harasses fishing and coast guard vessels of other claimant nations, using them as bases for the area's Chinese coast guard and militia operations. China has used strong-arm methods against Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, Indonesia, and the Philippines, whose exclusive economic zones overlap with territories it claims. It is important to note that maritime law does not recognize the Nine Dash Line, in July 2016, an arbitral tribunal declared that Chinese claims of historical rights within the Nine Dash Line were unfounded. Unsurprisingly, Beijing dismissed the ruling, describing it as wholly biased and ill-founded. Beijing has recently intensified its territorial claims in the South China Sea SCS deploying more Coast Guard and militia vessels into contested areas, such as the waters off the Philippines, where Chinese warships have participated in blatant provocations. As a Chinese Coast Guard vessel fired a water cannon on a Philippine resupply operation in the Spratly Islands in August 2023, tensions between China and the Philippines reached a breaking point. The U.S.-China Dispute Disagreements over marine areas are made worse by the tight relationship between the U.S. and China. The latter supports the Southeast Asian nations, many of which are U.S. allies but is not a party to the territorial conflicts in the SCS. According to official statements, Washington's mission is to maintain freedom of the seas in a manner consistent with international law and preserve peace and stability. However, the U.S. revised its stance on the SCS in July 2020, declaring that China's claims to offshore resources and its campaign of intimidation and harassment were wholly illegal. U.S. warships have recently increased their watch in the South China Sea, frequently supporting ASEAN Coast Guards and navies to thwart Chinese aggression in the disputed waters. Conversely, China sees the U.S. military's presence as an unwanted intrusion. Beijing claims that the Freedom of Navigation Patrols FONOPS, conducted by the U.S. Navy breach Chinese sovereignty and jeopardize regional stability. In a disputed airspace Regarding the territorial conflicts in the SCS, there's more reason for concern, unlike the relatively clear-cut nature of the claims over land and sea territory, 
The competition for regional airspace is hazy. In contrast to its claims to the regional maritime areas and marine features, Beijing does not claim the airspace over the SCS. China has established an Air Defense Identification Zone ADIZ, over the East China Sea in opposition to foreign military aircraft in the Western Pacific. However, China has refrained from establishing an ADIZ over the South China Sea presumably due to the difficulty of enforcing exclusionary air zones within crowded airspace. This does not imply that China is flying benignly over the SCS. Not at all. In the airspace over Taiwan, Chinese military aircraft routinely follow and harass Western military planes. In a dangerously close formation, a Chinese J-16 fighter jet approached a U.S. surveillance plane conducting a regular operation over the SCS in May 2023. Washington described the action as unnecessarily aggressive, it happened months after a Chinese plane almost hit a U.S. aircraft over the South China Sea. Indeed, there have been several instances of Chinese aircraft spying on U.S. military aircraft over the Western Pacific in recent years. Australian military aircraft have also been harassed by Chinese jets over the SCS. Nevertheless, China appears aware of the risks associated with in-flight interactions. The two countries have inked a Memorandum of Understanding MOU, that specifies conduct guidelines for in-flight and marine scenarios. Beijing is taking precautions to prevent a recurrence of the 2001 EP-3 incident in which a Chinese fighter jet and a U.S. spy plane collided over the South China Sea. ASEAN Inconsistencies Some claim that if ASEAN had not taken inconsistent stances regarding China and the SCS, the problems would not have been as contentious. Many ASEAN members have differing opinions regarding China's militarization of island characteristics and maritime aggressiveness. While some nations, like the Philippines and Vietnam, vehemently condemn China's island building and bold posture, others, like Cambodia and Laos, favor Beijing more. The fact that China has considerable political and economic influence in Southeast Asia is not helpful to ASEAN. Though its impact varies across the governments it affects, some being more subservient to it than others, Resistance to China's South China Sea posture among the states of Southeast Asia is relatively low. A code of conduct, or a set of specified guidelines to control behavior and maintain peace and stability in the South China Sea, has been the subject of years of negotiations between China and ASEAN, but no agreement has been reached. Territorial conflicts provide a severe barrier to ASEAN's relations with China. Leaders in Southeast Asia are aware of the risks posed by China's maritime aggression. Still, they also understand that if ASEAN fails to resolve its territorial conflicts, it may lose its credibility as a leading region. A careless handling of regional tensions could indeed ignite a chain reaction of hostilities. As a result, many states feel forced to balance working with China and fighting it. Not significant to the Quad, but also not unimportant. At first glance, the SCS dispute appears more of a problem for the Quad, a multinational alliance of the US, Australia, Japan, and India. India, Australia, and Japan are aware of the risks involved in getting involved in matters that do not directly affect them. Nonetheless, they all acknowledge how crucial the area is to trade and military balance. Quad partners understand that Chinese aggressiveness in the region cannot be tolerated in a critical theater. Notably, Japan considers itself a significant player in the maritime affairs of Southeast Asia. Tokyo has substantial commercial interests in the South China Sea despite having no eases or territorial claims. Japanese policymakers are concerned about the increasing dangers of Chinese dominance over vital Western Pacific maritime corridors. The idea of China occupying Taiwan, Japan's close ally and partner, also unnerves them. Even though it has mixed feelings about conducting military operations in the SCS, Australia is concerned about China's maritime assertiveness. 
Canberra has made an effort to aid U.S. naval activities in the region. Indian interests in the South China Sea under Chinese occupation India has also attempted to reconsider its SCS strategy in recent years. The significance of the Western Pacific for trade and connectivity is becoming increasingly acknowledged, even though Indian officials are still preoccupied with the Indian Ocean. More than half of India's trade goes through Southeast Asia. Therefore a marine security there is more critical than ever for New Delhi. The political elites in India highlight the significance of the SCS as a vital commercial gateway in which India has an interest. Nevertheless, the necessity to restrain China's ascent in the Indian Ocean region continues to influence New Delhi's SCS strategy. The knowledge that China's growing influence in the eastern Indian Ocean weakens India's strategic clout in its neighborhood is the driving force behind this. Observers in India believe that more People's Liberation Army Navy military projection in the Bay of Bengal could arise from a consolidation of Chinese strength in the SCS. So, the main objective of Indian activities in the past few years has been to follow Chinese research and surveillance activity as it moves through the South Asian littorals. Undoubtedly, New Delhi has taken steps to improve relations and increase involvement in Southeast Asia. India recently gave a warship to Vietnam and inked an agreement with the Philippines to supply three BrahMos missile batteries. The Indian Navy conducted its first cooperative drill with ASEAN navies in the South China Sea SCS, in May of this year. In June, India and the Philippines jointly issued a statement pleading with China to abide by the arbitral decision from 2016. It's unclear if this signals a shift from India's long-standing neutrality on territorial issues in Southeast Asia or indicates that India's political interests in the area are expanding. New Delhi's desire to have an impact on Pacific geopolitics is evident. India aims to strengthen its reputation as a responsible player in the area by sending a message to China that their campaign of intimidation in the SCS is unacceptable. Although this supports the Act East policy and the security and growth for all Sagar, ideology in New Delhi, it does not change the fact that India's SCS military posture is still primarily defensive. Despite focusing on freedom of navigation and the high seas, India has not resisted Beijing's disproportionate territorial claims in the SCS or confronted China's maritime aggression. It might be the appropriate course of action, given that India's strategic interests are limited to the Indian Ocean. Being an aggressive player or an involved stakeholder is not an option for New Delhi. Instead, it has to be a devoted ally of ASEAN nations prepared to retaliate against China.